Cape, one of the most beautiful parts of South Africa with its world-famous garden route, hosts the South African Rally Championship for the first time in 17 years. The Otaniqua forests in the mountains surrounding the town of Niza are a natural playground for the adventurous adrenaline junkie, but the area also offers a range of other activities. Nestled between the Otaniqua Mountains and the Indian Ocean, Nisna, the jewel of the garden route, is a preferred holiday destination for anyone looking for sun, sea, fun and games, making it the ideal host for the sixth round of the 2011 South African Rally Championship. The previous round, the Volkswagen Rally in the Eastern Cape provided plenty of action, with the Longmore Forest stages claiming early victims in Lee Wan Polter, Charles Wilkin and Yapi Fonica. The event was dominated by Mark Rounier, at first chased by Johnny Gemmel and Herren Pecken. But the former champion suffered a wheel failure that put pay to his onslaught. Reigning champion Enzo Kuhn took up the chase, but had to settle for third behind Gemmel and Cournier, who took his second win in a row. We'd like to thank all our associate sponsors for coverage of this year's Garden Route Rally. Usually, this time of year, the weather is mild, but at the start of the Garden Route Mall in George, spectators and competitors alike faced cold and wet conditions. Mark, running second on the road today, that's surely going to be quite tricky. Yeah, it has actually uh, added a little bit of pressure, but um, I think at the end of the day, it's going to happen sooner or later. So, you know, it's, we've got to, got to make the best of it. And uh, I'm just happy that I have the package going second on the road. Um, I've got a great package, so it's really up to me, and I, I've got to make it work. Due to the conditions and the weather, I think we need to take a cautious approach uh, because it's treacherous out there, it's very wet, and it's raining as we speak. We'll see where we fit in and how hard we have to push. And if we're in reach of uh, winning stages, we'll push a little bit harder. If not, we're going to make sure we get to the end. First on the road, Conrad Rotenbach in the Greenfield Ford Fiesta leading the championship as he takes the start of the rally. And he will probably not be happy about being first on the road. Mark Renier next up. We know the last two events currently in second position in the championship standing. Enzo Kuhn currently in third place in the BP Volkswagen Polo. Reigning champion, of course. Followed by last year's runner-up, Johnny Gemmel. We've got a very, um, uh, shall we say, fragile situation. We've got a MSA Court, a National Court of Appeal, which if we win that means that Johnny is leading the championship by a substantial margin. If we lose this appeal, then Johnny goes back to fourth in the championship, where he's starting today. So the scenario is we let him go, and uh, means we have to win all three rallies uh, in which to be guaranteed a good chance to win the championship, or we play it conservative and think that we uh, take it easy and be safe on the roads because it's a very tricky rally. Ein Latigan in the only Peugeot 207 to take the start. His teammate Fasilu Pussy already out with brake problems. As we go to special stage one, just next to the more Destiny Africa short one on dirt, 3.74 kilometers long. Very uh, slippery conditions out there. Matt Smith joining me. It's going to be all about the guys just feeling out the setup of the cars at the moment. First man on the road, we say he famously doesn't like being the first man out there. But what can you do when you're leading the championship? Conrad Rodenbach and Nicholas Klinger out there testing the terrain. Look at the conditions there as we go on board. And Longbach's left of the bumps. 100. Long five right plus slight like tightens in. Pretty tricky conditions as well because even though they had a lot of rain, there was a lot of standing water, but there was still a lot of grip just underneath that. So these guys were really feeling out the terrain and finding out what the tyre situation was and what the suspension setup was to try and find some traction in the short stage. As we go to Mark Renier, the benchmark time set by uh, Rotenbach was 2 minutes 26.2 seconds. That's of course the time to beat. How is Renier going to tackle the stage? Similar cars, very similar setup as well. Tyres is going to be the key situation, especially on a muddy rally like this. Cronier has taken the gamble, gone for the 205s. Everyone else running the 195s, trying to find a little bit of grip through the mud. But as you can see, there's not actually a lot of standing mud. There is a lot of grip out there. As we watch Enzo Keen, Mark Cronier went 1.4 seconds slower than Conrad Rotenbach. And Keen also attacking the stage, carrying the number one as the reigning champion. Max Bridge, 100. Turn slow left. Gimmel then, as we heard from his team boss, Glenn Hall, 
kind of a weird way to actually go into a rally. Do you attack? Do you hold it back? He definitely needs to get a podium. I'll tell you that. He needs the points, absolutely. And so far, nobody has beaten the time set by Conrad Rotenbach. Gemmel going 3.7 seconds slower. Rotenbach then trying to get that monkey off his back, leading the championship, but everyone else seems to be building up pace, and he's going to be watching his mirrors for Cronier the whole way through. Erken Fekin and Pierre Aris, the winning combination a couple of years ago. Making a mistake, though, on stage number one, that's going to drop him back. You won't lose too much time in a short stage like this, but you will lose confidence. Erken Fekin, of course, wants to come back after a rather poor result last time out in the Volkswagen Rally. And I wonder, in these conditions, Matt, whether it is not perhaps better to run at the front of the field. It definitely is. I think the terrain out here is going to get chewed up. So if you can be one of the first men across there, you won't have to deal with the bog that is obviously going to be ensuing later on. Fekin going 6.9 seconds slower than Reutenbach. Here is Charles Wilkin and Greg Godrich. Open lip seven. Watch Carl. Oh. And three max dips. Three max dips, 100. Really not the start that you want. And unfortunately, that is just a bad luck scenario. I guess it had to happen to someone. But Wilkin will have wished it had happened to someone else. Nicholas Ryan in the Grand Mark Volkswagen Polo. As we go on board with Jan Habich and Robert Paisley. Habich's good at attacking early on, so watch out to see what he can do. Should be able to run some good pace on the first short stage. Then we go straight into a long one after that. You can see he's attacking early on. Absolutely spot on there, Matt. He is, he is attacking from the word go. And that bridge just gives you some idea of how tight things are going to get a little bit later on when we go into the forest. That bridge was pulling your elbows in time. And he goes only 1.8 seconds slower than uh, Rotenbach. John Williams and Kubus Frey, second of the Sassol Fords, and we know these cars have got a solid setup. So coming into this rally, it's going to be all about just learning the conditions and feeling out the car setup. They're actually really lucky to have the short stage to get things dialed in. This gives you a good idea of what the kind of conditions they have to cope with. First time in 17 years that we are in this area, so an even playing field. As John Williams loses about four seconds in that stage. Janiel de Villiers now. Yeah, Janiel is on a, a level playing field here, and we say that because no one else has driven this terrain. We haven't been here for a long time, so no one's really going to hold an advantage. Janiel de Villiers has got a good chance in these conditions. And the Villiers would go just over five seconds slower than Rotenbach. Leroy Polto, who rolled out in the last event, and like to uh, get, come up with a better result this time. Aggressive driver, very exciting to watch. Heinrich Lachikon, first and only of the Peugeots, his teammate out with brake problems, and I'd be hoping that he doesn't have any problems, although he will have a car that he can strip down for parts should he need to. The Pertec Peugeot team have been improving this car, both cars in fact, right throughout the season as they learned the new cars. Of course, the debut season for this car in South Africa, and Heinrich Lachikon certainly wants to look Good at the end of uh, this event. Mohamed Musa and Grant Martin, first of the team total cars to come through here, also would run some solid pace early on. Nice crowd turnout here. And uh, his teammate JP Damso in the second of the team total Toyota Auris cars. These two guys still getting used to the uh, Auris that they debuted on the last event. And then Namibian Wuru Dipinar in the Toyota Ronex, nabbed by Derek Jacobs. And Sebastian Klaassen, nabbed by Cindy Harding. So after stage one, Rotenbach leads Cronier by 1.4 seconds, Keen in third ahead of Habich, and Damso up in a very impressive sixth position. From a short first stage then into the longest stage on the rally, this is where the cars are really going to be stretched. Bergblas 1, 23.13 kilometers, lots of hairpins, brakes, and tyre setup is going to be key. In the highlands, it's going to be plenty of grip, and we can see that, but when you get down the bottom, it's a swamp. Charles Wilkin currently in 13th position, almost 10 seconds off the pace after being delayed in the previous stage in the uh, Basel Reed Ford Focus. Right eight at point. Right eight. And immediate left seven of a grassy. From now we must really try to concentrate on the rhythm. The course is like nine, 70. Wow, really tough conditions there. How did it go? Uh, I think we've broken a shock or something in the back. So Not a good stage. to limp the last few k's. So it sounded like shock problems. The team are going to have their work cut out and not a good start to the rally. Then we go back and pick up on team total. JP Damso currently in sixth position overall, just 3.8 seconds off the pace. And that is a very impressive performance as we go to uh, Ein Ladekhan currently in 12th place. 
and he's 8.2 seconds off the pace. The Peugeot looks like it's got a good setup early on. Very wide sitting car as well, so it should be nice and stable. We are going to go into some tighter areas a little bit later on in the rally, but this is ideally suited. Laura Dippenau, the young Namibian in the uh, McCarthy Toyota Run-X, currently in 15th position overall, and he's been impressing a lot of people this season. Good debut season, but you can see wow. not an ideal setup on the car just yet. Massive understeer in the tight stuff. Rautenbach coming into stage number two in the lead, but he's going to have to work hard to control it because everyone else will push the pace. Got some new suspension parts come in from overseas, so he's still trying to find that sweet setup. He's narrow for right. Narrow for right, 50. Four right minus max left, and 50. Narrow max left, 70. Need max left, maybe. A good start to the stage, but the brakes started to cook towards the end, and he lost a lot of time. Uh, I just want to go forward. The brakes are... I need to go forward, Nico. Camille de Villiers now, along with Ralph Pitchford in the BP Volkswagen Polo, currently in eighth position overall, 5.1 seconds off the pace. Hip and lift to the rough. He would come out of that stage complaining that he had absolutely no grip and drive out of the corners and was going to have to change his gearing on the car. John Williams in the second of the Sassel Ford Fiesta is currently lying in seventh position overall, just under four seconds behind. Right one, and right one, left six, narrow tightness to nine. Very slippy. Stay right, left one. Well, as we can see from those shots, that's how tight the rally is in the forest, and there's absolutely no grip. So from an open section like this, when we see Yari Habek, then he goes down into the trees where there is just loads and loads of mud and no traction. Joint third at the moment, Jan Habek, 1.8 seconds off the pace set by Conrad Rothenbach in the previous stage, and he is still very much in contention. Kuhn, though, he needs to find a little bit of extra pace here. He is running slightly off the back and seems to be having some problems getting up to pace on these treacherous conditions. That's the man in joint uh, third position with Jan Habich. Volkswagen really trying their best to stay at the pace set by uh, the Fords and the Toyotas. Well, it was the first real stage and uh, we've got two Fords ahead of me. Looks like we only managed to beat the one. And uh, Kronier took some time off us, so the fight is on. Leroy Polter currently in ninth position overall, certainly want to improve on that, but the gap of only 5.7 seconds to Rotenbach. Yeah, himself is on the charge though. You can see making a little bit of small mistakes as they go into the forest section, and he won't be the first, he won't be the last for sure, but the aggressive style of Polter is going to slow him down in his early runnings. Johnny Gemmel currently in fifth position overall, 3.7 seconds off the pace, and he would like to get up right there to the top. Gemmel had a clean run there, would eventually go on to finish third on this stage. Yeah, it was okay. It wasn't bad. A bit tricky, but uh, it was okay. And the rain's not affecting it too badly? No, it's all right. It's just slight drizzle. Aaron Fekin and Pierre Aris currently in 10th position overall. First opportunity for the competitors to really stretch their legs, get into a rhythm, push, push hard. Coming into the end of the stage then, they'll be feeding back to their pit crews on the side and getting all the information from the sideline. This is the crew that are going to be telling them where they are in the rally. Erger, not a bad time there. Yeah, look, it's uh, very tricky. Um, and then in the forest, it's extremely slippery. So um, uh, it was a good stage, very challenging. Mark Renier coming into this stage in second position, just 1.4 seconds behind Conrad Rotenbach. Will he now put the hammer down? Double caution, right for a bad bump. Just slippy hip and left, slippy hip and left. Yeah. Bump up and dip again. Bump up and dip again. 140, fast, right three over dip. 140, fast, right three over dip. 60. Cronier attacked this stage, and this is where he starts to build his pace for the rally. No one else went into the stage as hard as that man. It was a great stage, and I really enjoyed it. It was very technical. Easy to make a mistake in there, and you'll burn big. It's extremely slippery in the, the dark hairpins, so you know you end up understeering into the into the sides of the hill. So you've got to be super, super smooth. So Cronier wins the stage ahead of Fekin and Gemmel, which means that Cronier moves to the top of the standings overall. And Conrad Rotenbach, a very disappointing ninth in stage two. Moving on then to another area.